Hi guys, it's Sarah from McNerds and Fangirls, and today I'm probably gonna possibly do be doing one of my favorite videos of all year. All year, and that's because it's based off probably one of my favorite movies for the whole year. That's right, last night, uh, it was opening night for It on Friday. I didn't get to go until last night because I was off last night. I went to go see the new It. I was a fan of the miniseries, but mostly because of Tim Curry. If it hadn't been for Tim Curry, I didn't wouldn't have thought the 1993 version was anything. It was okay, it wasn't great, but oh my god, this version is probably one of my favorite reboots ever. I call it a reboot because every time someone calls it a remake, people say, no, this isn't a remake, this is a reboot. So I'm going to call it a reboot. For now, sorry about everyone that's all like, no, it's a remake. Remake, but whether it be a remake or a reboot, it was still a fantastic movie. Movie, but I'm going to tell everyone going into this now. Now, because I'm going to have, this is like a huge spoiler review. So if you don't want to get spoiled, I would click off this video. Go watch the movie because it definitely deserves the recognition it's been getting. It's definitely... High up on the run to Mato scale. I think Ron Mayo's is giving it last night it was a 90 and now it's an 89% because of course Ron Tomatoes is like the pickiest website I've ever seen. But this movie definitely follows the book more than it follows anything from what I heard. I heard I can't really say it follows the book because I'm only on page 214 of the book because I'm getting very distracted in my reading lady lately, but by the time this year is up, I'm hoping to read the rest of this book. Because if you look at this book, this book is pretty hefty, and it's intimidating, and it's the probably one of the most intimidating books that I'll ever probably get to. Get to, but oh my god, this movie, guys. This movie deserves all the recognition it gets. Bill Skarsgård is amazing. The kids in this movie are amazing. Amazing. The only thing I'm having slight problems with is people saying that the guy who plays Pennywise in this isn't as great as Tim Curry. But here's the thing. if It's a little unfair. It, that would be like me comparing this actor to playing Joker to this actor because the Joker is such a versatile character that you could do anything with him that you want. You could be the terrifying Joker or the funny Joker or the abusive Joker. Joker, there are so many ways to do this character and it's not fair to Bill Skarsgård that you're holding him up. A 27 year old actor, by the way, I learned that Bill Skarsgård was 27 yesterday. Yesterday. You can't hold up Bill Skarsgård, who is only 27 and has been in very little, to Tim Curry, who has, like, this huge acting roster behind him, who's famous for the role of Pennywise because he was original Pennywise. Pennywise, this is like me comparing Keith Ledger to Jack Nicholson with the Joker. Two totally different Jokers, two totally different takes. Takes. Tim Curry's Pennywise is more the funny prankster while still being a little bit terrifying, while Bill Skarsgård is generally, in my personal opinion, a lot of people will say he isn't terrifying, but to me, if I crossed this person on the street, I would go F that shit and go away, because this Pennywise generally terrified me. Terrified me. And he's not, he's not funny, like, the original Pennywise is hilarious. Hilarious, and he has a lot of great jokes. Tim Curry had a lot of great jokes because he was a prankster in that. In that, that's what made Pennywise, the tap dance clown, generally likable to most kids that he kidnapped. Well, this one, I don't know how he got most kids to learn because if I saw that clown, I would back away and run away screaming because fuck that shit. I'm not dealing with that clown. That clown, guys, it was just... Uh, every time Pennywise was on screen, I was just all like, oh, not this again. Oh, God. God, it was just, I loved it. I loved this movie so much. If I had to give it a rating, 10 out of 10 stars. It was definitely one of my favorite movies of all the year. Probably, possibly one of my favorite horror movies of all time, to tell everyone the truth, because 
Well, it's... Well, the original miniseries couldn't do a lot because it's made for television and it was the 80s when they couldn't do a lot of television. This one went there. It went there in so many different ways that I appreciated the fact that it went there. Went there. It went all out. It didn't stray away from what it was supposed to be about. About It didn't try to make it light and fluffy in any way. Anyway, it was very realistic no matter how much we hate the fact that kids get hurt in this world, they do, and it doesn't stray away from the fact that kids get hurt in this world. As well, they get hurt probably just as much as adults do, and this movie did not back away or stray away for this one. For this one, so it's definitely a 10 out of 10 stars for me. I personally hate when kids get hurt, and with the miniseries, I have to say that if I compare the miniseries kids to the movie kids, I definitely care more about the movie kids than I did about the miniseries one. One, Like, yeah, I don't want these kids to get hurt because they're kids. But there was never a time during the miniseries that I generally thought, except for Jordy, because you know Jordy's gonna die because that's not, like, a huge spoiler. That's literally in the first five pages of the book. Seriously, in the trailers... Seriously, and everything, it's just, it's what makes the, it's the start of this it craze, and, and god, and there was never a moment in the miniseries that I thought these kids were in danger of getting hurt whatsoever, but in this one, whenever they got hurt, I, like, I felt that, it was, like, you know whenever you're reading a book, or you're watching a TV show, or a movie, and you get so invested in these characters that if they even get a scratch on them, you're so invested. These are what these kids did to me. I was so invested in the fact that they were gonna... I was so invested in the fact that I didn't want these kids to get hurt. I didn't want Pennywise to touch them. I just wanted them to be okay. And it was just, it was amazing. It's amazingly done. The cast is perfect. Perfect. Whoever does casting deserves, like, an Academy Award. I think this movie deserves all the awards. I don't care who's Oscar a nominee bait for this year. It's not gonna be... I don't think any of those movies are gonna be as great as this one, in my opinion. In my personal opinion. You might not like it. And I don't know. Uh, as a horror movie buff, as a person who loves horror movies, I loved this one. This one, and that's because it didn't rely so much... Like, yeah, there are jump scares. There's always going to be jump scares in horror movies because we can't do a horror movie without li unlimited jump scares. But this one has jump scares while having terrifying imagery along with the jump scares. So it was just, it was really well done. A-plus to the visual effects team. A-plus to the costume design because when we first saw Pennywise's new look, it was just like... Really? Is that what really what we're gonna go for? But as soon as I saw Pennywise on screen, how visually pleasing he was to look at, look at, like how scary he actually truthfully was, I loved it. I loved this costume. I wasn't really bothered by it. I was a little bothered to begin with because he didn't really genuinely look like a clown to me. But oh my god, was I wrong. I take back everything I said about being a little bit hesitant at the new Pennywise because he didn't look a thing like the old Pennywise and oh my god it was just amazing and I loved it so much I'm sorry I feel like I'm like a broken record here but I generally love this movie this movie is so gr amazing amazing they had a cast of unknowns which I was a little bit hesitant about about, I was a little hesitant about the unknowns because I haven't seen them in anything. I don't watch Stranger Things, so I don't know the main, one of the main kids. Because it's like, oh, that's a kid from Stranger Things. And I'm like, I don't watch Stranger Things. So this was totally a cast of unknowns for me. I've never heard of anyone in this movie except Bill Skarsgård. And the only reason I know Bill Skarsgård is because his brother, Alexander Skarsgård, and his dad... Dead, and I'm just over here like, is anyone from your family not talented? Like, seriously, you got the dad who's been in a great majority of supporting roles. That's just an amazing actor. You have the brother who was Eric on True Blood, which personally is my- Eric Norfman is my favorite character that Alexander Skarsgård has ever done. 
Then, and then you've got Bill Skarsgård, who will now be known to this current generation as Pennywise. Even though a lot of us know Pennywise as Tim Curry, I am totally establishing these two as different Pennywises. Because while I love Tim Curry's version of Pennywise, I also love uh, Bill Skarsgård's version of Pennywise because it was so different and nuanced. And I love the different take on it. Well, I love the original Pennywise because he's hilarious. Hilarious while also being terrified. I love this Pennywise because he's terrifying in a much darker way. Way, like, he's not funny whatsoever. Like, I wouldn't want to have a single conversation with this guy. And Bill Skarsgård's one, I would want to stray away from. While Tim Curry's one, I would, uh, I would be terrified. But, you know. You know, it would just... It's two totally different ones, and it's just, it's terrifying in my personal opinion, and oh my god. Guys, 10 out of 10, go watch it. If you haven't seen it, what are you waiting for? Go watch it. Watch it. The, this production company deserves all the money that this is making out of it. Like, guys, this movie is so popular right now that it'd be Deadpool out for the number one rated R movie. Sorry, there's like this fair going on outside and I'm all like, I think I heard my door, but it's not my door. It's a neighbor's, but oh my god. God, guys, this is beat out Deadpool as the number one top grossing rated R movie of all time. It's gotta... It's like, it, it's awesome. It's just, it's worth all the hype. It's worth the 9 to $10 you're gonna go spend watching it watching it, it's worth it. Like, this production company, I personally, it's like, I've had my issues with Warner Brothers, but this one is definitely great. Great. I definitely love it so much. But that's it for my non-spoiler section. So if you want to get spoiled for it, or if you don't care, stick around. I'm going to be going in depth. This is probably going to be like, awesome. Like, I literally waited a day after just to let the hype sink down because, oh my god. Whenever I got out of this movie, I was hyped up. I was talking about it for hours with my husband. Husband who, let me tell you, my husband hates horror movies. And this one, he thought it was amazing. Amazing. It generally scared him. Scared him, and generally, as me seeing what I've seen in horror movies, I don't get tend to get as scared. But this one scared me, <laughs> scared me, and I don't know what it is about horror nowadays. Nowadays, like they had five years where horror was just nothing but boring, and there is only a few good horror movies. But to having like a, a lot of good horror movies out so far this year, and it's just like they're upping their game, and it's just amazing. Amazing horror movies, whatever they're doing right now, whatever they're actually, the pro their thought process, they need to keep that up because if we can make horror movies generally terrifying instead of just having jump scare after jump scare, that would be amazing. So go watch this movie. I highly recommend it. It's possibly one of my favorite horror movies of all time. All time. Not even gonna lie, it probably is my favorite horror movie. So go watch it. It's amazing. Just go. Just don't even look at reviews. Just go to it. Just, it's amazing. Okay, so by non really people, because I just, I have to talk about this movie. If I don't talk about this movie with the public, I'm just going to literally generally explode all over the place. The place. So by non really people. Okay, so if you're still here, I, you know that I loved it. It's possibly the best, well-acted, well-produced horror, big-budget horror movies that I've seen. Seen, like, it was worth every penny they spend to make it. It was worth the 27-year wait between the miniseries and this to have such a great production value. So I'm going to get started with the bullies in this one, which I brought in the adults in this one, too, because how could I not bring in the adults as the bullies? Because the adults were very, what I have heard, say, gratuitous, and I'm just over here like, I, I agree. The adults in here are very shitty adults, and I get that they're under a curse and stuff because of the main town of Derry. Most adults forget it, but there's some, there's like... All the adults, man, I don't know if they just 
like, all the adults in this movie are shitty. She, like, all the adults in Dairy Man are shitty. Or if it's just these people's parents, they're just really shitty people. People, even Bill's dad, who was uh, suffering from the grief of losing his younger son, was kind of like, oh, well, that's a little, little mean. But I'm not going to talk about Bill's dad, because Bill's dad literally had, like, maybe five seconds of screen time in this whole entire movie. Maybe, like, I think the adults, the, the adults that we saw the most were Beverly's dad, which is a fucking shit. I fucking hate him so much. And, uh, Eddie's mom, which, she reminds me of, uh, it might be terrible, but she reminds me of Norma Bates. Like, if you've seen the Bates Motel, she reminds me of that kind of mother. The overprotective, keeping her son in a shell type of move. Move. So, that's what it reminds me of. I'll be right back. It's just, yeah. I think my dog's making noises downstairs, so we'll see. We'll see, but first, I'm going to start off with the local pharmacist. The local pharmacist is very eerie and creepy, and he was, like, pedophile to the max. Like, oh my god, that, that one scene between him and Beverly, where the boys don't have money to pay for the supplies they need to patch up Ben because of what Hen Henry Bauer is carving the H into Ben. Ben, which my husband was generally shocked that they kept, like, it happens in the book. It, I've got to that part, so I know it happens in the book, in the book, where Henry carves an H into Ben's stomach. He didn't think they would go that far for child violence, but they did. They did, so Henry carves the H into it, into his thing, so they have to get supplies, and then the local Beverly flirts with the local pharmacist because she, of course, they need a distraction. Distraction. And I think the most disturbing scene in this movie, besides, you know, the all the disturbing visual effects, I think the most disturbing part in this movie is definitely the fact, definitely the pharmacist, because there's a scene wherever Beverly... Lee's all like, I like your glasses, it makes you look like Clark Kent. And then the farm, she asked the pharmacist if she could try on his glasses, you know, so he won't see anything. And then he's like, sure. And then he literally tells her, well, you look like Lois Lane, which if you know anything about Superman, Lois Lane is Clark Kent's love interest. And I'm like, oh, he I was with the girl that's beside me Well, when she's all going, oh, hell no. Nah. I was all like, yeah, that's just... Ew, that's disgusting, that's very pedophile-ish, and I'm all like, what the fuck is up with the adults in this town? Like, seriously, are all of them pedophiles and locking in their children to keep them safe? Like, oh my god, it was just... Why? Why? And then you have his daughter, which is, like, the popular girl in school. Like, she was a little shit. I fucking hated her for, like, the five minutes of screen time she had, because you have to have a female... Pr antagonist too too but I don't even know why they include her because she didn't really do much besides like antagonized Beverly and then wrote the loser to lover thing on Eddie's cast cast that's the only thing she did that was the only two scenes she was in and I hated her for like the two or three scenes that she was in and cause you gotta have a shitty popular girl in these movies I guess Nowadays, to antagonize a female protagonist, because, you know, why not? Why not? I mean, we don't have a number of monsters in this, right? Right, and then we got who I like to call, um... It's like, I know I'm forgetting someone. Someone. We got Henry's minions, who are... Like, they're definitely little shits, but they're not entirely shit. As shitty as Henry, even whenever Henry does bad things, they're like, well, okay, that's taking it a little too far, which is one of my least favorite scenes in this movie. Maybe not like the knife thing, which I still hate Henry Bowers for, because I definitely hate Henry Bowers. Honestly. 
Honestly. But, oh my god, when they were about to shoot the cat, I hated it. It's, like, one of my least favorite scenes in the whole movie, because I hate animal violence, and oh my god, that was just, that was a little, it's like, I already have kid violence, which I'm not okay with, okay with seeing, but now we have animal violence in the movie too, oh my god, when he almost shot the cat, I was so glad that his dad came and took the gun from him, because if I had to see that, I'd be like, okay, just, like, oh my god, I hate this kid so much. So much, but even with Henry and Minions, they're like, okay, that's taking it a little too far. That's a little too psychotic, bro. Bro, like, Henry was a legit psychopath. He needed a psychologist or something. Or something. And next, <laughs> speaking of it, boys, we have Henry Bowers, who I genuinely hate. He's not my most hated bully in this one. That's Deli Guy, be Beverly's dad, hands down, because I hate child molesters. They're like the worst shittiest people in this world. Honestly. But, oh my god. Henry Bowers needed a psychologist. Psychologist, like, so badly. He, of course, he gets beat by his dad. His dad's very abusive. But that doesn't... I know a lot of people who have abusive parents. But that one's just, a, like, this kid needed a psychologist. And it's just... It's horrible. He's horrible, and I hate him, and I didn't want him on screen, like, ever. I'm like, oh my god, can we just get this dumb shit off screen? Like, seriously. Seriously. He's like the kid that I don't want my kids hanging around if I ever have kids. Like, definitely. Okay, and then the next thing we have here is my most hated bully, and that's Beverly's dad. I hated him so much. Like, you, they don't openly say that he is molesting his own kid, but there are hints that he's definitely... There's definitely some sexual assault going on for Beverly. Beverly, like, he's got her... Like, I think the most powerful scene in this movie, besides all the, you know, scariest scenes, is whenever he's touching Beverly's hair. Hair, like, her hair is long in the beginning of the film, and he touches it after uh, he sees that she has Tampax with her, and he's touching her hair like a creepy pedo, file and saying, you're still my little girl, aren't you? Aren't you? And I'm like, oh, fuck no, no, bro, oh, fuck, I fucking hate you already. Ready, but the most powerful scene is when Beverly, and powerful and sad, I almost cried on the scene, is when Beverly takes her hair and she starts cutting it and goes, look what you made me do. Made me do, look what you did, look what you did, and oh my god. The scenes of Beverly's dad, I just wanted that motherfucker dead. I hated it so much. Him so much. Mm, he definitely got what he deserved from Beverly in the end. I, like, her dad is like one of the worst shits I've seen in my life. Like, honestly. I was like, girl. I don't know what my cat and dog are doing, but I pray to get... God, I don't have to clean a mess. Okay, so the next thing I have here is Losers Club themselves. First off, with my least favorite of the Losers Club, which is Stan. I think Stan is a very, like, minor character. You don't really see Stan that much. Of course, he has more screen time than Mike does, which we'll get to that in a minute because that irks me a lot that Mike doesn't get a lot of screen time. But Stan, Stan is definitely, like, my least favorite. He's very babyish. In my opinion, which if you read the book, it makes sense why he's babyish and why he's such a minor character. Which I won't get into spoilers for the book because, of course, it part two's not in theaters yet. For for the people that have watched the miniseries, you know what? Why they're making Stan, you know, leave off from the group, group and a less important movie in the group, movement in the group. And oh my God, Stan! I think Stan's fear, like. Stan's monster is the worst monster. And it's not in the way, like, it's horribly acted. Acted, but oh my god, that shit generally scared me. I think that's the only part of Stan's that I liked is his monster that he has to fight. Oh my god, that chick was horrifying. Horrifying, and I don't even know why she was horrifying. It was just, she was terrifying to me, honestly. Honestly, and then you've got the second to last, which is Mike... Mike, he comes in at number... 
at number six, but that's because he wasn't in the movie for that long. Like, I think Mike gets, like, maybe 30 minutes of screen time in this two-hour and 15-minute movie. Movie, which really irks me because Mike has such a bigger role in the books and even in the miniseries, but in this one, they take the fact that he's a historian, the historian in the group, and give it to Ben, and it's a character, like, I like Ben, He's awesome. It makes sense because Ben du is a bookworm and stuff. But at the same time, why take character trait from your only like character of color in you have in this movie and give it to someone else? I don't really think that's fair. Honestly, if I had an issue, it would be like that. That's an issue I had with a movie. The movie is that Mike, my, one of Mike's uh main character traits are taken away from him and given to someone else, and I don't think that's really fair to the person who plays Mike. Mike, I don't think it's fair to move a character trait that suddenly. Suddenly. But that I think that's the only thing that really bothered me about the Losers Club is because it they gave a character trait to Mike. The only thing I knew about Mike was that his family was in the butchering business and his fear was being burned alive because his parents were burned alive trying to save him. Save him, save him. and of course, you know, Henry Bow- Like, one thing I forgot to mention about Henry Bowers is the great thing that they did about this is they didn't stray away from Book Henry because Book Henry is a, the hugest racist ever. Ever, and they, like, they actually show that he's a racist in this book, unlike the, uh, 1980s version of it. It, uh, they, like, they strayed away from the racism a little bit more in that one. Well, this one is, like, a full front racism. It's not hidden. You know Henry is racist towards Mike, and you know there's, a, like, this huge thing where uh, it's, a, like, it was just, it was, like, oh God, if I couldn't hate Henry more, he's, He's like, oh, he's the big, he, he's a huge C word, okay? He's like the hugest C word ever. <laughs> ever, because he's a racist, and he's a killer, and he's a bully, and he's just like one of those guys who I generally hate. Hate, like, I would hate him so much. Much, like, that kid deserves a good ass kicking. <laughs> he really does. Um, uh, my next favorite character was Richie. He had a lot of good lines, good jokes, but I didn't feel as connected to him as I did the other characters. Characters, like, I like Richie, but I didn't like him enough, if people know what I'm saying. Saying he had a very, he was a comic relief of this movie, like, he, his dick jokes, his dick and sex jokes were on point. It, they never fell flat. I think the only, uh, joke that fell flat was that whole, well, I know what I'm writing, for what I did this summer, I think that one fell flat, I'm like, bro, bro, you don't write about this, you don't talk about this, this is not something you talk about, and oh my god, I think that's the only joke of his that fell flat for me, like, eh, that was a little, little cliche, and very misplaced, and no, you just don't do that, that, my next one is Edie, uh, Edie, he's very, uh, he's a hypochondriac, for one, because his mother's a hypochondriac, He's a germaphobe, which I totally get it. Get it. If I had to pick my favorite line from Edie, I would definitely choose whenever Pennywise, like, throw, throws up the black substance on him, and he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you, and I'm like, I love that one. Like, like, he's a germaphobe, and of course when Pennywise throws up on him and he's just all like this, I love whenever he gets so enraged that he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. <laughs> kill you. And that was just, that was amazing. Amazing. I didn't really have a lot of favorite lines from Megan Stan. Richie's is coming up because it's actually one of my favorite lines in the movie. Libby. And then and next we have Bill. Bill, for me, is just, all like, okay. He was a little bit more whiny than I expected him to be. Honestly, but with Bill, unlike with Stan, who was just whiny to be whiny. Whiny and generally, in my personal opinion, a coward. Coward. Bill has a reason to be whiny in this book. He just lost his brother. Brother. And the one thing that really went there that I really hated about, uh, I think it was Edie who said this. 
Then it's all like, you just got him to think your brother is dead, bro. And it's all like, bro. Bro, that wasn't cool. I don't even care if you're terrified. That's not a cool thing to say to a person. And then, okay, so next we have... But Bill, Bill, the whole tri love triangle, Bill, Beverly, and Ben, I thought was really well done. You couldn't really tell about the love triangle in the miniseries. Well, this one definitely took on the love triangle thing. Thing. So the next one we have here, which is my second favorite of the Losers Club, which is Ben. I love Ben. His whole obsession with, I can't remember what <laughs> band it was. Was it's gonna it, it's like new kids on the block. There we go. His obsession with new kids on the block was so cute. His historian thing. Well, I hated that they took they took it away from Mike. That was well done. Well done. I like that he's just like this most giant nerd ever. I just love Ben so much, so much. And what, he's not afraid to get shit done. Then like I like Ben. He was awesome. And then, of course, the character that I thought was most developed, my favorite loser of all the Losers Club has definitely got to be Beverly. Her storyline, uh, even in the original, like, even in this book, my favorite character right now is Beverly because Beverly, I don't know if it's because I'm a girl and she's more relatable to me than the guys are. Guys are? But she's definitely the most relatable character in this movie. Like, I could totally relate. Like, I... I could relate to that whole getting tampons in the store and not wanting anyone to know you're on your period. I could definitely relate to that. Uh, her sexual assault storyline was done very well. Well, where it's more of a subtle sex. It's like, it's more of a, you know this is happening to her. They don't show it until the end until the end, what her dad's really doing to her. Like, you know, you know there's something there, and you know it's happening to her, and it's really awful what's happening to Beverly because her dad sexually assaults her, assaults her, and he also beats her, too. They didn't really go with the beating one in this one. This one, because I think they, like, it would be too much. I think it would be overkill. Overkill, honestly. But, oh my god, her dad, I hate her dad so much. Like I said, child molesters are the, like, the worst thing imaginable. Even murderers. When you're, a child molester is in jail, wants to kill child molesters because they're the worst monsters out there, in my personal opinion. Opinion. And, oh my god, Beverly was done very well. I loved her so much. I love how she's the one person in the group who doesn't fear anything, but her biggest fear is her dad, which... You know, it makes sense, because if you're sexually assault assaulted, most people are terrified of the person that sexually assaults them, and oh my god, it was just, this character was so well done, and I couldn't imagine Beverly being, Beverly's part being better, and the actress herself, she was great at acting, I think out of all the child actors, she definitely shines the most, she's definitely gonna stand out in big things like I think this is her big role I think this is her shot in the big time right here right here so now moving on from the Louvers Club we have the monsters cuz you know I have talked about the monsters the monsters first we have the lemur which Edie describes it as a walking infection and that's exactly what it looks like looks like whenever I saw this monster I was grossed out uh, it was disgusting. It was, ew. Why? Why would you do that? The lemur was awesome. I loved the lemur. The lemur. And, of course, you have a totally different monster, which, you know, he's not a monster in the beginning because he's a kid that gets killed. But then you got his entity, which is Georgie and all the dead little kids that Pennywise has feasted on. Like, their souls. And you have them. Them, like, the flamethrower scene, wherever that one guy goes into the sewers to go kill Ben or bring him to Henry. Henry, you have him, and he's going down in the sewers, and my oh, a hell no mama moment is whenever he's in the fl doing the flamethrower and all these dead little kids are, like, um, their faces are are pretty much torn off, and some of them are burned, and it's very bloody imagery. 
injury. I was just like, oh god, oh no, uh uh. uh and then, you know, and then the red balloon pops and you have Pennywise and his like jaw is literally gone and I'm like, oh, oh, oh gross. Gross, but there are definitely a lot of monsters in this one. And then you have my uh favorite monster who I, whenever she comes on screen, I'm just like, oh fuck, I hate this chick. Why does this chick have to be on screen? And it's Stan's thing, which is he has this thing in his dad's office, and I don't know who the fuck buys a painting in this one. In this one, because oh my god. Why? But there's a painting of this woman, and she's deformed. Like, she has this head that's slanted, and her eyes are, like, one eye's right here, and the other eye's up here. And she has these really sharp teeth, like Pennywise has. Has, and when she smiles, it's, like, so fucking creepy. Creepy, like, when she was on screen, I'm all like, oh, fuck no, fuck this, I fucking, like, no, fuck. It's like, ugh, just no. Why? Why do we have to have this woman... But she was generally terrifying in the scene where she is, like, literally, her mouth is latched onto Stan's face. Like, her mouth is extended to where she is literally biting all of Stan's face. I was just like, uh-uh, no. Oh, God. Why? That was low. And then we get to our main monster, the guy that terrifies us all, which is Pennywise. And like I said... I said, Pennywise is generally terrifying in this one. Like, every time he was on screen, I would jump. Especially that projector scene. That projector scene was a whole lot of... Oh, fuck, no. <laughs> no, oh, God, gross. It's just... Uh, and then whenever they do the visual effects where he's just like... Like, it's literally like that. Like, he... He doesn't stand still, and I'm like, oh, God, no. Like, this book... Not in this book. This movie would be a great video horror movie video game. Is that am I the only one that thinks this would be a great video game? Because I think this would be a great video game and oh my god, it was just it was crazy. Crazy. But I would also like to address the fact that Tim Curry's Pennywise and Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise, you just can't even compare them. Cause they're two totally different approaches on this character character and it makes me frustrated that some people are giving this Pennywise a very low score score because of Tim Curry like I don't think that's fair as an actor to have this iconic role like it's a like to uh take on this iconic role and people not give him a chance because he's not Tim Curry of course he's not Tim Curry Curry and no one could beat Tim Curry out in a role that would be like someone else playing Frankenfooter in Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's just not, it's not fair to that person playing this character to take on this character and people automatically dismiss them because they're not what they wanted them to be. Be And I know it's disappointing, but if you watch this movie, like if you're still in the spoiler review, go into an open mind, like open your mind and realize that this guy is not Tim Curry. He doesn't have the acting credentials that Tim Curry has. Has. And he's not going to because Tim Curry is like a legendary actor. Actor. That's like casting someone else in part for Jack Sparrow on Pirates of the Caribbean because no one could have been like a better iconic role for that except Johnny Depp. Depp. It's just like those characters. You can't see anyone else playing them. But you have to because Tim Curry is a little too old for this role. I'm not even sure if Tim Curry is still acting at this point. I think he is. Very small roles, but he's still acting. Acting. So go into that with an open mind. Go in, like, even if you've seen it and you hate Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise, keep an open mind that he's not gonna be Tim Curry's Pennywise. He's even approached this, this and said, I'm not gonna be as good as Tim Curry because I'm not... Tim Curry, no one can out Tim Curry, Tim Curry, Curry. So I, I would like to approach that. Uh, the visual effects and the blood and gore were amazing, amazing. Like I know there's a lot of use of CGI in this one, but I couldn't even tell. I couldn't tell what was practical effects. I couldn't tell what was CGI. It was very well shot and directed, and I just loved it so much. Uh, what I didn't like about this movie, let's go into the negatives first, because I want to end this one in a positive note. Uh, 
I didn't like the adults because they were very creepy. They were very, they didn't give a fuck. They were very pedophile-ish, a lot of them were. Where I didn't, like, one scene in this movie that I just hate because it's so fucking cliche is Ben and Beverly kiss. Like, I like them together. Together, I'm rooting for this. This, but that whole Ben and Beverly kiss was so fucking cliche. It was, like, taken out of Sleeping Beauty and I hated it so much. So much. Uh, Henry almost shooting a cat. I hated, um... Henry killing his dad, I thought was unnecessary, especially since, you know, it makes sense for the second part, because if you watch it, you know why that's, like, such a uh, important scene. But at the, the ending of this, it looks like Henry Bowers is dead, so I don't even know why they kept that scene, but, you know, we'll see in part two. Two. So what I liked in this movie, uh, the characters were well-developed, they were really awesome. Even Bill Skarsgård and Pennywise, which is a very, I was very reluctant for... Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise because, oh my god, it was just, mm, it's like no one, it's like, like I've said, I'm a huge fan of Tim Curry, but I went into this knowing that Bill Skarsgård wasn't going to be as great as Tim Curry was, was, but, oh the characters are awesome, uh, Pennywise being terrifying, I like how they took out the whole Pennywise being a jokester thing, because that actually took away from the terrifying factor for Tim Curry. Curry, because I would love ter Pennywise to be terrifying. I really would. And this one nails it. In almost all the movie I loved, I love the scary scenes. It was just awesome. My favorite character, of course, has to be Beverly Marsh. I think the one thing that lacks is the ending where they already, like, put so much on you. Like, they did everything they could, and the ending just felt a little flat for me. Like, the ending, my heart dropped, and it was just... Like, whenever Bill is talking to Georgie, and you think it's Georgie, and, like, Bill's all like, I like, I miss you, and I'm sorry that this happened to you, but you're not Georgie because he knows it's Pennywise. Like, he shoots him, and then for a split second, your heart drops in your chest because you really think he shot Georgie because for the past two minutes, like, it takes you out for a minute or two of screen time. Like, you actually think that... Georgie is dead, like, Bill actually killed him, like, that was actually Georgie, and then he morphs into Pennywise, and you're fine, but in that two set, like, two minutes, where they, I thought Georgie was dead, like, Bill had actually killed his brother, oh my god, I was bawling like a fucking child, child, because I didn't want to see that, but, like I said, like, I like the whole, uh, Pennywise trying to turn the Losers Club against Bill whenever he holds Bill and goes, you all could be free, you all could be safe, just let me have him, let me go in my hibernation, and we'll totally be cool. Be cool. You don't have to save him. And Bill is telling him to go. To go. He's the one that got him in this mess. He doesn't want any more people to get hurt. And then Richie steps up, and at first, they're faking you out, because they're all like, Richie's all like, man, you're right, Bill, we should just leave your ass, your ass because you're a horrible person. You brought, you brought this upon all of us. You made me go into this terrifying house, house where we all almost got killed. But my favorite part was when Richie just looked in and said like, and now because you're ass, I have to kill this motherfucking clown. And then all of them start beating up on Pennywise, using crowbar spears, anything they could get to get him down. And he's like, for Pennywise, I feel, find he's more of a final raid boss that's like, no matter how many times you stab him and you shoot him and kill him, he's like almost impossible to kill. kill. And I loved that no matter how much Pennywise got hurt, he would always morph. And the whole, I don't know what it is, is but whenever his joints were all together and then he pops up out of the dresser, that one part, that was generally terrifying, and oh my god. The ending rocked. I, I just, like that boat thing, wherever Bill is just about to deliver the final blow to Pennywise, and he uses, like, Georgie and Bill's thing to distract Bill into not stabbing him, and then he, like, goes down into the sewer, because you think they killed it, but you know they haven't. Evan, and it's just, uh So, favorite scenes, slash, the generally terrifying scenes. Scenes. Uh, I have, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm gonna probably make a two, second part to this. 
part to this, but um, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna stop this video right here. I know a lot of people want me to talk about my generally scare favorite scary scene, scene in this movie, but my runtime's only like 50 minutes on this thing, so I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna make a part two to this, and I'm gonna upload them both. Both. So I will see you guys in my next video where I will be going over the scenes that generally terrified me in the new It. it because I think this deserves its own section. So there you guys have it. That was my spoiler review for It. It. I will come back. I will do my generally terrifying scenes. But for now, that's the end of my review. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Just remember... That this movie is awesome and it deserves the recognition it deserves. And I will see you again in a couple minutes while I film my next video.